Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to discuss another very interesting pattern which is aggregator or you can say stateful entities pattern or you can say durable entity pattern and which is one of the very important pattern of Azure durable functions with very easy code example. Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time. As you can see, all the green parts I have already covered in my previous video sessions and the highlighted one I am going to cover now and all the white one that I will cover in my upcoming video session. So stay tuned and subscribe for all the upcoming sessions. So there are some prerequisites that I strongly recommend you to take a pause of this screen and read all those and especially Azure Emulator should be installed on your machine. You should be having a Visual Studio 2019 and a basic understanding of C Sharp and Azure Cloud Computing Services will be very helpful for you to understand this session and all the important links of my previous videos or playlist is given in the description of this video. Okay, now as you can see from this screen, we are talking about aggregator means when multiple requests we want to manage on the entity side or you can say the stateful entity side then we should use the stateful entities okay let's go by definition what microsoft says about it this pattern is about aggregating event data okay this symbol is of data okay and we are aggregating all the event data over a period of time into a single addressable entity addressable entity means we can perform some query we can get the data and we can set the data of this event okay in this pattern the data being aggregated may come from multiple sources means these all data are not coming at the same time but time to time are these data are coming and we are consolidating or aggregating here and may come from multiple sources may be delivered in batches or may be scattered over a long period of time okay the aggregator might need to take action on event data as it arrives means we can perform some processing as well and external clients may need to query on the aggregated data means we can get the data from this okay so we can query as well the tricky thing about trying to implement this pattern with normal status function is that the concurrency control become a huge challenge not only you need to worry about multiple threads modifying the same data at the same time you also need to worry about ensuring that the aggregator only runs on a single virtual machine at a time so these are the key factors where we think about we should use aggregator or stateful entities or you can say durable entities okay so this is the very basic and very neat and clean example of counter durable entity okay in this you can see we are using one current value which is serializable and we are using json property for that so this value can be serialized easily and we are performing add operation here with the help of that we are adding some value to the current value reset we are making it zero in terms of get we are accessing this value and in terms of delete we are just deleting this current entity okay and here we are saying we are using entity curve. If you can recall in all my previous sessions we have discussed timer trigger, we have discussed HTTP trigger, but here we are talking about entity trigger. Okay, and we are saying I durable entity context will take care of this and the type of is counter okay so let's see a few more important points you can use durable entities to easily implement this pattern as a single function that we have that i am just showing you don't worry i will discuss all these things in practical manner okay and durable entities can also be modeled as a class in dotnet so there are two types this is a class based example but we can also write durable entities on function based as well this model can be useful if the list of operation is fixed and becomes large okay means number of operations we have fixed and maybe it can become large maybe performing more or aggregating as well the example of an equivalent implementation of the counter entity using dotnet classes and methods 
clients can use nq operation nq means we can you know give different number of operations to perform that should happen only at the entity side maybe also known as signaling signaling means we are telling the entity this operation we want to perform with this input data okay so an, an entity function using the entity client binding in this case and there is one important note in addition to signaling client can also query for the state of an entity that we have already discussed using type safe methods on the orchestration client binding and another important thing entity functions are available in durable function 2.0 and above for c sharp javascript and python okay and there are a number of ways we can call this these entity do or you can say the durable entity and one of the way is by creating HTTP tri trigger or another way is you can also call the entities using orchestrator as well using orchestrator client as okay so but in the, in the current session we will discuss with the help of HTTP trigger okay so you can see how we are signaling entity we are saying we want to perform add we want to pass as a input value to and this before that we have to create the entity id okay in entity id we have to pass the name of our durable entity and the entity key entity key we are passing in the http trigger request so we can get it from there you can see here's the one entity key okay so entity id is created then we are saying okay these two operation this operation i want to perform and if i want to check what is the current state of my entity so we are calling client dot read entity state async okay which is returning which is returning a serializable object and we can check the entity states from here okay so let's see all these things in practical manner let me go to the visual studio and show you everything so this is my visual studio if you followed me along then you must be aware about this is azure template created one azure function project okay and in that i have just added the aggregator pattern but we have to adjust so many pieces of code so i have made the required changes which are required to un understand the aggregator pattern okay so the very first thing is our entity this is our current value and all these basic methods and this is our entity trigger okay which is take care of everything okay so all these methods are easily accessible with the help of this entity now second part how we are calling it we are calling it with the help of i durable entity client okay this is very important thing i durable entity client is required and we are calling it through http trigger and before calling the durable entity what we need to do is to create the entity we need to pass the name and we need to pass the entity key entity we, we can pass through http request as well so we'll pass it from there don't worry i will show you right uh, after a few minutes in the browser and then we are signaling signaling means we are telling this is our id add operation i want to perform and i want to input two okay if you will recall this is my entity this is my add method this is the input where i want to pass two okay the two will be added now if you will see on the next line we are now reading the state as a json object okay so we will receive the response here and with the response we can get okay what is the result from my entity okay so let me run this solution and see how it looks like now you must be aware about this window so the moment i run my solution so you can see it is saying my entity is executing my entity is executed means it is there okay now at the you know once my solution is running it is showing me all the logs so we can see get counter http endpoint is ready to hit okay so what all i need to do i will just copy this url okay and just paste it into the browser and i will show you how it's working and this is the only entity trigger available okay so what i will do i will place the big point here okay f9 and let me just go to the browser so this is my rest client and here i have pasted the 
link okay so we have to put the entity key for example i am saying it is my counter okay fine and if i click on send now a big point is activated right and if i hit f10 over here so you can see entity key is received my counter yes which is good and now we are calling add operation we want to add two okay now two must be added now we are reading the entity okay and if we read it this is my json object in json object what i am getting entity exists yes and how much data we have added 10 okay it because i have already run the solution multiple times that's why it is showing 10 okay and if i just do you know just pass it okay now my request is completed okay and if i run it one more time okay my data is processed in this entity if i run it once again the result will be 12 okay so let me go to the browser and hit send here once again hit here see here so now the response is 12 right because i hit it once again so every time 2 is getting added so we have seen an entity can be read and write using the durable entity client from another function okay so I hope you like this video if you have any suggestion any comment post into the comment section I will reply on that as soon as possible and I will see you in the next video where we will discuss durable function types okay which is very very important action and I request you to provide your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos so see you in the next video till then bye bye